Ryan Goodman and Tangway Podcast is brought to you by FanDuel, the exclusive wagering partner of the CLNS Media Network. All right, folks, it's that time again. Gary Tangway, Bob Ryan, Jeff Goodman, Ryan Goodman, Tangway, along for the right podcast. And we are brought to you by FanDuel, the exclusive wagering partner of the CLNS Media Network. Because right now, new customers get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's up to $1,000 back in bonus bets. Your first bet doesn't win. Just go to FanDuel.com slash Boston to join today. Okay, guys, here we go. Let's start with the rumor mill. And by, by the way, we will get to Bob Ryan's T-shirt later in the show. It's just he is so hip right now. He is like <laughs> retro cool. Retro. Um, he's had that. Wait, wait. He's had that T-shirt for how many years? I, I, I'm not sure it's retro. I think he bought it and still has it. Yeah. 31. Um. Talk. Anytime, anytime I see Bob Wright in an uncollege shirt, it's like a holiday. Yeah. Uh, here we go. So uh, I think something's afoot with Jalen Brown. Bob, I'll start with you. Something smells rotten in Denmark to me. I just I'm reading the tea leaves and this is what I read. I don't think Brad wants to pay him. I think Jalen doesn't want to be here. And the only way he'll be here is if he gets paid. I think that Brad Stevens has shown that he can be cold and heartless and all about business when he traded Marcus Smart. Something smells with this Brown thing. Your thoughts? I'm not, I'm not as, you know, deeply uh, suspicious as, as you appear to be uh, at all. But I must say the one loose end in my mind is that he's never expressed complete fidelity to the to the city or the cause. We, he's had the opportunities, I think, and people, he left people wondering what's he really think about being here and 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 we know that a b there's this lingering um issue of who how good he thinks he is and whether he should be regarded as the equal of tatum and and does he want to go somewhere you know to quote have his own show unquote a la Kyrie, you know years ago uh, this is all uh, just all speculation because he's never you know he's he's, he's only, only he only leaves you wondering he doesn't say anything about it um um, but I still think they'll get it done. I, I just think they, they got to pay him. I wish they didn't have to pay him the max. I've, I've gone through that because that's the reason they have to pay him the max is a stupid reason, uh, you know, because he made second team all league. I mean, that's uh, absurd. They should never have been codified. But anyway, it's the reality. And um, so I'm, I'm not, I'm worried, but I'm not, I mean, I'm not worried. I'm, I'm anxious to get it done. Uh, I still think it'll be done. Again, I said this last week a little bit. Is it dragging a little bit because Brad Stevens is so um, smart, for for lack of a better word, and just saying, like, I'm not going to rush into this thing. Who knows what the asking price is going to be for Damian Lillard in a week or two weeks. Let me slow play this a little bit. And who knows? Maybe the asking price comes down enough. Um, You know, also the fifth-year player option is important in this one uh, because otherwise you're basically giving uh, Jalen Brown control for five years. And again, listen, guys, do we really think unless they win a title, do we really think there's any chance Jalen Brown is here for five more years after this year? No, no chance. Zero. No, Zero. I don't even think Tatum's a long time. Uh, if they don't win a title, you could be right. I if mean, they again, don't win a title, just, I think he's gone. I don't know if he's gone because he's still the guy and beloved here today. But you're right. If he doesn't win a title next year, does the fan base start to turn on on Tatum and Brown more than they turn on, you know, Brad Stevens? Or this year is Joe Missoula, right? Missoula was the the fall guy this year for the most part. He was the one everybody was expressing their their anger at. Uh, but I think next year it it flips and it becomes whether it's Tatum or Brown or a combination of both. I, I, but I also think that the Missoula thing will linger until, and, until and unless they, they do win. Yeah, yeah. they got to win in the playoffs. I'm just saying, you know, it just, it, he's a handy target. And and the it's particularly, my God, if, if, you know, Houston has a, you know, turnaround year next year. They won't. They won't, Bob. You don't have to worry about that. Okay. I mean, they may turn around and win ten more games. But All right, and and yeah, a turnaround year would be thirty-eight and forty-four, right? right. So 
Yeah. Okay. yeah. I just, to wrap this one up, I just have a feeling that the player doesn't really want to be here in Brown and the Celtics don't want him at that money. And that's just what I keep coming back to. Now, Bob's right. Everything Bob said is factually correct. So it's almost like a forced marriage, you know, which I don't like. I really don't like that. So we'll see. But I, why, why, I can't, why can't we get Embiid? Let's trade Jalen Brown and get Embiid to Boston. That's get it. That is a segue, kid. Um, I mean, just, we get, so we have Porzingis and Embiid shooting threes. That's what we have. Two seven I mean, shooting threes. threes. Yeah. Uh, so Embiid has said uh, that he wants to win a championship regardless of where it is. Right? Uh, your thoughts on that, Jeff? And Darren Moore had some comments on that. I mean, Joel's always spoken his mind. It's funny. I mean, he's really, I think, matured the last couple of years. Um, I spoke to him when he came here to Boston about it, and he said a lot of it is because he had a a, a son recently. Uh, so in the last couple of years, you look at Joel, and again, the Joel that 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 I've known, the happy-go-lucky, talking shit on the court, uh, isn't isn't there as much. He's more focused. Uh, I think his whole deal is. Listen, I've been in Philly for all this time. I had to deal with the tanking at first. I I then had to deal with playing with Ben Simmons. And, and look how Ben's turned out. Um, now I got James Harden. Like, what the hell is going on here? I'm sure he's frustrated. I'm sure, you know, he, he's kind of at the end of his rope here. He's, you know, he signed a, what, four-year, $215 million deal um, that goes through 2027. So I would think, to me, I think this is probably the beginning of the end for Philly just because I don't think they're going to get enough for Harden. And look at that roster now. I mean, Tyrese Maxey is clearly – Maxey and Tobias Harris are nice players. They're nice players, but they're they're not more than pieces, and you need a second star-type player. Philly is not going to have that because they're not going to – James Harden doesn't command that. Most teams don't even want James Harden in their roster – Never mind give anything of value up for James Harden right now. He is now, he's 28, he'll be 29 in March. Uh, is, is he? Uh, it, that's the stage uh, for sure where guys start to say, okay, I want to win uh, for sure. If they haven't done that, this, this, this is a textbook scenario that we are uh, in a modern NBA that we're looking at here with him, okay? He's been a bridesmaid. He's never even been a maid of honor. He's only been a bridesmaid. They they get they get knocked out in the conference semis four years, I believe it is. Okay, so he, he's tired of that. Um, and you identified he had to play with. First of all, he had a delayed start in his career. You know, two years, and then he gets he has to live with the the Simmons scenario. And you're right about that. And why not? So it doesn't surprise me. I think no one should be surprised at this at all. So I'm I'm I'm, I'm just nodding. Yeah, no, no kidding, no kidding. Tell me when there's new news. You know, yeah. I wouldn't miss any any star, 28, 29 mm-hmm. years old, uh, whether it's Joe Embiid or anyone else you can name uh, that, that would make that statement. I would be going, yeah. Why? What else you want him to say? Well, right, here's, my, here's my trade proposal for both of you. Here's my trade proposal. I don't even know if the numbers work, but let me throw it out there for you. <laughs> Jalen Brown and Malcolm Brogdon for Joel Embiid and P.J. Tucker. Would I'm you do it, Robert? Oh. Do it in a heartbeat. But I with mean, Philly? Yeah, that, that that Philly would laugh, don't you think? Probably. Yeah, probably. I mean, again. Although, they got, although, although yeah, I mean. They got, you, yeah. you get a young player if if Jalen Brown. Think about it. If you're Jalen Brown, you're the guy then. You get what you wanted. So oh, yeah, you you're sign the extension. You're in Philly. You get to show Boston, hey, I'm better than you thought I was. I am a number one guy, which I don't think he is. And and Boston, yeah, you get an injury prone ish big man uh, who, yes, he can shoot threes, Gary. He can also dominate in the post. Well, yeah, I mean, you want him in the post. I mean, I, I was kind of joking with about yeah. you know, when you have he and Porzingis, you definitely yeah. want him in the post. Look, I, I think we all agree we would do that tomorrow. You just mentioned the injury thing. That's the selling point. If you're the Celtics, you go look. Well, Embiid, you know, what's he going to play? Half a season? So, okay. but I, I'm Philly, man. I don't know if I'm doing that deal. You're probably not. You're probably not until the point when you when you realize. And, and you know what? If you're Boston, I'd throw in two first round picks. Those two I first round picks, I would take too. them. Take all the second round picks we just acquired. Take them all because if you throw 
Tatum and Embiid out there? Okay. I mean, again, a lot of pressure on Derek White. But there's going to be a lot of pressure on Derek White next year. Oh, anyway. yeah. I mean, to me, that doesn't matter. Well, first of all, the great thing about trade talk now is as soon as we say take the numbers out of it, we're good. But I will say this, Bob, to, to Jeff's point. I think that if we're thinking about it, Brad Stevens is thinking about it. And I think that Brad is. Stevens is thinking about everything. Everything. Because last year was a debacle. So I think as far as Stevens is concerned, based on what we've seen him do so far, guys, we know he's not shy to pull the trigger. He's not shy to make moves. Brad Stevens is looking at, he is turning over every stone in the NBA. Take your first swig at betting MLB on FanDuel and get 10 times, that's 10 times your first bet amount of bonus bets and up to $200. Just bet 20 bucks and you'll land $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. That's 200 you could spend betting everything from the money line to the over-under to who you think is going to be, well, hitting the first home run. All in the app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Plus, when you win, you get paid instantly. There's no better place to bet on MLB than FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So sign up today and visit FanDuel.com slash Boston and get up to $200 in bonus bets. That's FanDuel.com slash Boston. Boston, FanDuel, official partner of Major League Baseball. Oh, I, I, I would buy that. I'm, 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 so I mean, here's what I'll tell you. I'm looking at the numbers as we speak. Jalen Brown's at 31.8. Brogdon's at 22.5. <laughs> That's about 54. Uh, and 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 Bede's 47.6. And Tucker's 11. That's about 58. The numbers work, guys. And you know what? Tucker does. Tucker fills a lot of voids oh. that this team needs. Uh, one being a vocal absolute killer. Uh, so, I, I mean, listen, for the Celtics, that would be an absolute no-brainer in, in my opinion. Yeah, of course it's yeah. For the Sixers, you're probably saying, hey, we need more. But the more may be, uh, again, first-round picks, maybe, I don't know if they have another young player. That's the problem. Well, give him Robert Williams. Give him Robert Williams. If you want him instead of Brogdon, you you can if have him. Gonna, if you're going to import Embiid, you know. Right, right. Give him Robert Williams too, and we'll take on whoever they don't want. Whatever mm -hmm. the 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 you know the the guy is um, that they don't want uh, down the end of the bench. Take that. Take the dead weight on. Who cares? Well, Embiid would be rejuvenated. There's no doubt about it. He's more serious. He wants to win a title. Uh, again, you know, you'd have to look around the NBA if you're Philadelphia and see if there's a better offer out there. But I like the way you're going, Jeff Goodman. <clears throat> That's what we do this summer. Yeah, <laughs> we make stuff up. We pontificate. I like it. Meanwhile, meanwhile, back to Philly for a second in the Harden situation, which Daryl Morey addressed yesterday, and that is, I want a you know, I want a star player back. Oh, uh, gee, really? I, I'm, but Harden is is an, an odd duck. You know, obviously, and Jeff's already stated. You wonder who would really, after all we've seen, right? And and, and uh, now that. Plenty of, you know, what is he, 31, too? You know, he's been in this league a long time. People know what it is. There's no secrets at all. You know, people know what you're going to get. And I would think that the more teams don't want to bother with him than than would want to bother Agreed, Bob. Harden, yeah. Harden turns 34 in, in a couple of Oh, my of God. Years. Yeah, forget it. Yeah. So, God, God, of course, Daryl, of course you would. But, no, they're – Maury's delusional. He's delusional, you know, again – yeah, remember when the whole Ben Simmons thing happened? He held out, held out, held out, and got hardened, and that was considered a win. Well, now looking back on it, you know, a, a little way, bit I of a win. To, I want to back up very, very quickly to something that you said, Jeff, and I want to identify myself as a paid-up member of the Tyrese Maxey fan club. I, I, I think he's a little Love bit him. better than you implied there. He is certainly not the same level as Harris. He's a better player, and he's got a better future. Than, uh, you know, Harris is older, of course, but I mean, he's going to well, be a he be better player. Yeah, I mean, can he be a, a bona fide number two for a team that can go deep in the playoffs? That's that's my big question with Tyrese Maxey is I don't think Tobias is fine as like your number three, oh, but I don't think I don't think Maxey's I'm not sure right. he's ever gonna get there where he's a number two guy. But but I didn't think Jalen Brown would ever get there, and he did. Uh I didn't think Jalen Brunson and as much as I loved him, he's exceeded my expectation. 
and it's possible maybe, although his, his edge is, you know, up here. Yes. And so it's uh, intangible. You can't, you can't right. implant yeah. that and in, into anybody else. <laughs> but right. he, that's impossible. So. Well, yeah. Speaking of that, as we go to that, as, as you guys termed the villain over next with Devin, Devin Chenzo, Josh Hart, Jalen Brunson together. Uh, Jeff, you guys, you know, these guys very well. Uh, how do you see this working out? I mean, th- those dudes are just winners. Like, that's what they are from Villanova. They, they won titles. <laughs> you know, Brunson was, uh, I think, the only guy to win two uh, titles. He won one coming off the bench and then won one as a, as a starter there in the modern era here. Um, Bob talked about his intangibles are just off the charts. His toughness, everybody questioned him. Now you bring in Josh Hart. Um, and, and and DiVincenzo, two other Villanova guys on those championship teams. And, you know, you're just building a, a, a Knicks franchise now with good culture, yeah. right? Good culture. Are they talented enough to make the next jump? I'm not convinced of that. But I think now, first of all, you're adding more trade equity that if you, if you do need to make a move, you've got some other good pieces that people like, which DiVincenzo oh. and, and Josh Hart are. You know, you got to make a move at some point. The only way you're going to take that jump and be, to me, Eastern Conference title contenders is to move one of Julius Randle or R.J. Barrett or both for, you know, a, a better star to play along with Brunson. But again, they've done a good job getting to this point. I think they're they're a little bit maxed out with their current roster right now. Um but man, Brunson has been everything and more that that they could have asked for. You know, I mean, I'll go back to what I said a year ago. That I said I love him, but they're over. You know, he, he, they're treating him as a star when I think he's an auxiliary player. Bob, Maya Koopa, Maya Koopa, Maya Maxima Koopa, Bob Ryan, you were wrong, happily wrong. I love being wrong in that matter. And and the guy had a sensational year, and there's no reason why that won't continue. Uh, now let's get to Bob's future. <laughs> Now, Bob's T-shirt, I absolutely love. And for those maybe who don't know, who are, and I don't know why you wouldn't, there's Larry Bird, there's Mary, Magic Johnson. It is the dream team. And I want to, we're going to talk a little uh, FIFA basketball. And I'm going to introduce this topic with a story. Uh, Ron Borges, who was, I believe, rooming with Bob Ryan at the Seoul Olympics. No, in Barcelona. Barcelona. I'm sorry, not Seoul, Barcelona. <laughs> so... Borges tells me, they were both working for the Globe at the time. He says, I asked one question to Bob Ryan, and he answered it over the next 48 hours. <laughs> Borges said, he said to Bob, I mean, all these pros playing, what's the big deal? And Bob went, oh, what do you mean what was the big deal? I mean, Bob, I remember that, and we know that it changed the scope of the Olympics and amateurism was gone and we loved that and so forth. But that was just such a monumental cultural moment with Jordan and magic and Larry and all those guys on the same team. Take us back to that. If you could. It was an extraordinary experience. Uh, one, one of my favorite memories of, of, of a 44 year career with the globe. And, and uh, it was exceeded any expectation for this, for the scope. It, 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 because it was not about winning and losing. Everybody knew they were going to win. Yeah, yeah. This was about exposing, and the whole purpose of it, Americans will still, some people just refuse to acknowledge what I'm about to say because they just don't understand. Uh, and that is, that this wasn't America's idea. This was the idea of Boris Stankovic, the executive secretary, or whatever the title was, the, the big cheese, the big kahuna of FIBA at the time. He was a Serb who would, uh, and, and, he had been a basketball player. Anyway, he was a he was the cheese of all the rest of the world's basketball FIBA. He wanted to raise the bar to show the rest of the world where they have to be by bringing in the Americans' best players and 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 showing that we're, you know what what, what what this is what you got to strive for. And we wouldn't even vote for it, by the way. But we and we so we reluctantly went into this. Stern went along with it, and and uh, you know we constructed this dream team. Uh, in, in 1992 to go to the Olympics, the first professionals, and uh, but it wasn't our idea. Okay, so um, it, it all you, the the tip off was immediate. We get to Portland for the tournament. We had to qualify, by the way, for the Olympics. We had to qualify, and and it was a, a tournament of, of the Americas, North America, South America. It was in Portland, Oregon, and our first game was against Cuba, 
And before the game started, Cubans asked to have a joint team photo taken as a as a keepsake. Then we went out and obviously buried the Cubans and a great line from the Cuban coach about about the scope of the American splendor of this team. I mean, it was one finger cannot cover the whole sun, he said. <laughs> and and so, you know, we we every so that's began the ritual before every game. The team had the photo taken. And my favorite isolated moment of the entire Olympic experience was we're playing Argentina. And they had a guard named Marco Milanesio, who was 6'5", a good player. I'd say, Jeff, the kind of guy he would, he would be, could be player of the year in the MAC, you know? Good. And he'd yeah. get drafted, but he wouldn't make the team, but he'd make somebody work hard. You know what I mean? That kind of guy. Anyway, good player, 6'5". He finds himself on a, on a switch where he is being guarded by Magic. And he's posting up Magic on the switch that Magic switched up. And he's facing the Argentine bench. And he's yelling to them, photographia, photographia. <laughs> Something to show the grandchildren. I, oh, totally. I, I want to great. see that photograph. Okay, that's that, that great, so right. anyway, now we get we get to Monte Carlo and and they and 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 that was a the one another experience. And and for a week. And point being, everywhere they went, and, and in Barcelona, they were rock stars. They were complete rock stars. It was it was a you know, and and Everybody else lived in a the village. They lived in a four-star hotel, you know, and and nobody cared. I mean, nobody thought they they heard nobody mind. Anyway, and then you know, and the games go, and we're showing them how to play basketball, and we trailed once for one possession in the entire Olympics, and that was against Croatia in the championship game where we got we fell behind something like in nineteen eighteen, something like that. One possession lasted less than 20 seconds because Barkley came down and drilled the three to put us ahead. And we never, we look, we, we look, never look back. Uh, and here's the great one guys, Chuck Daly in the course of the entire tournament, never called the timeout. <laughs> and, and so, you know, there was no, there was no need. So anyway, never needed to call a timeout. So um, that, that's that. I mean, it, but the experience now, here's what I'm summing it up. You think we would have had 100 plus international players, which we have every year now in the NBA, absent the dream team? The answer is no. We spread the basketball gospel. That's what Boris Stankovic wanted. We spread the gospel. And and it, it, it was ex- – and so for people who think we just were sulking and sore losers because we got beat by the Russians – or the Soviets, excuse me, in, in uh, Seoul in 88. No, had nothing to do with that. This is that everything to do with Boris Stankovic wanted to raise the bar, and we went along with the program. And it worked. Uh, it's worked. Look at the NBA today. Well, we're better for it, though. We're, we're much better for it. Hey, our last three MVPs, who are they? Yeah, a Greek. National guys. Yep. A, a, a Serbian. And 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 a, uh, a Cameroonian. Yeah, and we love the way they play the game. <laughs> I mean, we love to watch them. No, and that's just a, that's the tip of the iceberg, you know. I mean, uh, uh, we have a little Slovenian in Dallas. He's not too bad. And uh, but but we've got all anyway. It's, it's and, you had a, and you get a Frenchman as your number one draft pick. Okay, so now you want to know about the shirt. Go ahead. It's the last day in Portland at the Tournament of the Americas. So we we it's Sunday, and I am writing at the scores table where we were. Uh, and after the game, and I hear an announcement over the PA that um, they were having a closeout sale on merchandise. Anybody interested? Now's the time. I went up to the stand and found this T-shirt, a Larry Magic T-shirt. And on the front, you can see their, 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 their images. On the back, done as the respective Ten Commandments are, are their achievements at the time, in 1990 by 92. So I've had this shirt for 31 years. And one of my proud one of my great possessions i, I love that i, I break awesome. it out on, on important occasions such as this one and, and and now uh you have some thoughts you have the schedule for international basketball yeah now we got a uh, I mean, um, are you we'll gonna get a, a, a fiba world cup 2023 shirt too with paulo bancaro's uh, paulo Bencaro or, or, uh, or, or bobby portis you know right. <laughs> um no, I mean, uh, we, we we will discuss this in de- depth when we get closer because it doesn't come until the 25th of August. But just so people know, the FIBA World Cup, which, of course, FIBA wants to make into a more important ch- championship than the Olympics. And the rest of the world has always honored it a little more than we did. Um, we are, we, we are, we're we're going to have a team uh, coached by Steve Kerr. And it's on the 25th of August in the Philippines, Japan, and Indonesia. How about that, ladies and gentlemen? And we are in Group C. We, uh, with Jordan, Greece, and New Zealand. 
And I'll just run down the roster quickly, and you can contemplate over our roster: Paolo Banquero, Mikel Mike Bridges, Jalen Brunson, Anthony Edwards, Tyrese Halliburton, Josh Hart, Brandon Ingram, Jaron Jackson Jr., Cam Johnson, Walker Kessler, Bobby Portis, and Austin Reeves. That's our roster. What LeBron's not making a trip? It's a it's a B. What would you say, Jeff? A, a B plus roster or B? Yeah, I, I mean, I'm trying to think. Who you know, you've got some. Paulo's going to be a star. You know that. Brunson's on the verge of it. Anthony Edwards uh, could be a star. Hal First Burton's one of the best 25 players, I think, in the, in the game right now. Jaron Jackson's terrific. So I, I think you've got a handful of future stars and yeah. then some good young pieces. Obviously, you know, the names that are missing a little bit that you thought might be on a team like this, you know, a, a, a Zion Williamson, if he was healthy, John yeah. Morant, obviously is not going to be on this roster right now, but you know, Tatum's Tatum's at the next level now, right? He's already established himself. Exactly. But these are guys that are Very on young. their, on their come up. Yeah. Uh, it's, I was looking at big men. We got Jaron Jackson Jr. Who I forgot, frankly, he was a defensive player of the year. Oh, he's awesome. Yeah. Awesome. I didn't know his nickname. The Block Panther. I didn't know that. I love that. I didn't either. I didn't no, that's either. what they claim it is on Wikipedia, by the way. <laughs> Walker Kessler should be honored, huh? Yeah. He, he can he's, block shots, though, can he? Hey, listen, he's been way better because he's not super athletic, but uh, elite shot blocker. Um, have you looked at Canada's roster? I'm looking at Canada. I'm just going to give you one more name that a year ago you would have absolutely you know, said, okay, Bob, you've taken leave of your senses. This guy has zero chance of being on any team. Austin Reeves. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he, talk about a, a, a undrafted. Ah. Undrafted to uh, he could okay. shoot the hell out of the ball. He's okay. He's, here's Team Canada, American. Right. Yep. Jamal Murray, Shea Gilgis Alexander, R.J. Barrett, Dylan Brooks, Lou Dort, Nikhil Alexander Walker, Kelly Olynyk, Dwight Powell, Celtic O'Shea Brissett. And Corey Joseph, missing, big missing, Andrew Wiggins. I don't know what the deal is there. Wiggins is just a different dude. He's always been a different dude. He's kind of done his own thing. But listen, Murray and Shea. They got are, perimeter power there. Yeah, that Murray and Shea are, are great. But I'll tell you what, I love the Brunson, Halberton point guard, young two point guards for the for the U.S. Um, that, are, that are elite. And they just – they got guys on the team that can shoot the hell out of the ball. That's the thing. Like Mikel Bridges, Cam Johnson shoots the hell out of it. So I, I just – I like the way they're constructing these teams. They may not be the most talented, uh, but it's the right way to construct them for the most part. Yeah, and I love who the coach is. We're in good hands with Steve Carr. I, I, yep. I was, so anyway, that's it. The other uh, country uh, – oh, we won't go through it. Germany, I'll just quickly uh, – Maxi Kleber, Dennis Schroeder. Daniel Tice and the Wagner brothers, Fritz and Moritz. That those are the five NBA players on the on Team Germany. But uh, anyway, when we get closer, we'll we'll dissect this more. But just alerting people that it's coming up, and yep. uh, you know that uh, we, we 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 our honor our national honor will be at stake. Well, I love the Bob Ryan dream team stories, and just as I I wrap things up, I cannot think of a better coach for that team than Chuck Daly. Chuck and was perfect. Uh, he, he was central casting sent a coach whose ego would not get in the way. And, and uh, let me give you, I right, give you a Chuck Daly moment. And then on our farewell. Right. So of course I knew Chuck from BC back in 1969 and we got very friendly. And as a matter of fact, when he left BC to go to Penn, take the job, he invited my wife and, and myself over with our infant son to dinner. And uh, we, we in, in Jamaica plain where he lived yeah. anyway, and Chuck and I were friendly for, you know, so we find ourselves in, in Monaco, at the end of the day, up at the swimming pool at the Lowe's Monaco, where we stayed, and Monte Carlo, where we stayed. And uh, I'm laying on one divan, and he's laying on the next to me. We're looking out at the at the at the uh, Mediterranean, and he says, "God, whoever thought it would come to this <laughs> <laughs> for both of us?" Yeah, so there you crazy. go. God, God rest your soul, Chuck Daly. You were one. You were a tremendously fun guy to know. I love the guy. I mean, I, I think he was great for the league. Bob Ryan, always a pleasure. Jeff Goodman. Until next time, uh, this episode of uh, Goodman, excuse me, Ryan Goodman, Tangry Along for the Ride Pod and Zoom is brought to you by FanDuel, the exclusive wagering partner of the CLNS Media Network. Gentlemen, until next week. The CLNS Media Network is powered by FanDuel. Sign up at FanDuel.com slash Boston. 
and get in on the action with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. 